Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have with us Rick Mosley, who's the president of Black Pearl Insurance Solutions. Rick, welcome to the program. Uh, Hello, Mike. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, good to have you back. I've enjoyed talking with you about um, some of your approaches to helping your clients solve, um, you know, just questions that they have in their mind, because everybody is not an expert in everything, so they need to have someone on their side. And today we're going to talk about uh, using uh, uh, specific financial strategies for maybe a lump sum cash distribution from uh, maybe places that they get it from a work bonus or sale of property or an inheritance. And I know those things come up for uh, many people, but before we dive into that, give us a little bit of your background and what led you um, into the insurance and financial services industry. Uh, well, thank you. I'd be glad to do that, Mike. Uh, so in regards to, to, to me, um, I've been in the industry for over 20 years, and uh, the way I ended up um, in this industry is I started out uh, just working in the insurance side of the business, actually working for insurers. Um, I learned the business uh, from that side, uh, you know, worked at various levels, you know, initially, you know, front, you know, dealing with customers, uh, you know, in customer facing positions and uh, just kind of grew through those types, through those organizations um, and climbed the ranks and, and went into an executive role. Um, and it was when I was in the executive role, I really had the opportunity um, to, you know, to, to, to learn a significant amount about how the industry works, how the business works, you know, um, you got a chance to work with the actuaries and the like. Um, but what I ended up seeing when I was there is that there was a lot of opportunity to help um, individuals. Um, so what I ended up doing is I ended up leaving, uh, you know, that particular side of the business, and I decided to launch my own firm so that I could um, identify uh, products and, and, and services uh, that, that resonate with people based on the solutions that they're looking for. So in a nutshell, that that that's my path. That's the path that I took. Um, I could, you know, go much longer than that, but, you know, yep. <laughs> that's, that's high level, 50, 40 yeah, hours. That's good, high level. Tonight. Exactly. And and it sounds to me like, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the way that you are able to work um, in your firm now is you have the flexibility of seeing what your clients may need and you're not confined and constricted by specific lines of business and you can only offer this because you work for a certain company. You have the flexibility to look and see what's best for the client out there, right? That, that, yes, that's correct. With my agency, uh, we are uh, an independent brokerage, so we're not um, uh, beholden to any particular um, uh, insurer. Uh, what we do is exactly what you stated. When we meet with our client, we first have a discussion with them. We try to identify, you know, what needs they have that are that they need to have met. And once we have that discussion with them, that needs discussion, then my team and I um, go out and identify the best solutions that will address the needs of that particular client. Um, so, yeah, we do have uh, contracts with many insurers, and we like to match up um, the uh financial entity or the, 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 the insurer in, in certain instances uh, that will best serve the needs of the customer. There are many that are out there. Yeah, and I think that's so important for people to realize um, because I've personally experienced that uh, uh, in another realm, but with, you know, homeowners insurance and, and car insurance, and if you're locked into a certain company, you, you're limited in what you can offer. But then when you go somewhere else, they go, oh, well, let's put this policy here, this policy there, and, and it, you know, combines up to give me the best plan possible. And so when you're talking to your clients about financial instruments and insurance uh, for retirement strategies, boy, that to me that just feels like it gives you the freedom to really dive in deep and not be myopic and not be, um, uh, you know, only trying to you know fit that square peg in the round hole because that's all you can offer. You have got anything and everything that will best serve the client. So I think that is super. You know, we were talking about um in the opening, you know, some people are fortunate enough to have some uh, lump sum. Uh, um, access to cash and, you know, whether it's from an inheritance, things like that. But, you know, many people, when they think about planning for retirement, they think, you know, hey, I've got 
X number of dollars per month and some cash flow. I'm, I want to put that toward retirement. And that's wonderful. But there does come a time where you work with clients where they have all of a sudden, you know, an inheritance or all of a sudden a large bonus at work. And that's a whole different planning strategy. Um, so let's talk a little bit about how you work with those clients and what some of the considerations should be there. Oh, definitely. Yeah. So in that situation, uh, when whenever I have a client who's you know, fortunate enough to uh, fortunate enough to have um, you know either um, you know inherited a, a lump sum or a large um, uh, source of cash, uh, what I what I like to do is I like to you know sit them down and, and talk with them and, and figure out what their objectives are um, and you know how do they envision using the money? Is it going to be are they looking for uh, a return on their investment or to, to to pull the money out in two years, three years, ten years, um, are they? Is their goal to you know use that nest egg that after it grows uh, for retirement because then that's a particular discussion, or are they just interested in trying to um, you know uh, grow the um, uh, their their proceeds uh, while minimizing their risk, or are they open to exposing you know to 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 um, you know, uh, growing the portfolio um, using risky strategy. So it depends. It, it really, it really depends. Um, so, because uh, it even depends on their age, I would suspect. You know, if you're forty, you're going to have a little bit more risk tolerance than if you're sixty because you have less time to need the the growth. Uh, that is that is true. That is definitely true. Um, so. Yeah, so those are the types of questions uh, that we ask, and those are the type of uh, uh, questions that we go through. Um, is it going to be an immediate, you know, uh, disbursement, a deferred disbursement, fixed, variable? Because there's a lot of different products out there. Um, if someone is looking for a more conservative uh, type of annuity, uh, then you have your, your fixed annuity, where for a particular amount of time, um, the uh, you have an interest rate that's locked in, and your 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 funds or your proceeds are going to go are going to grow rather uh, based on that 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 interest rate uh, that's specified within the contract. Um, on the other end of the spectrum, as I referenced earlier, you have your variable um, uh, annuities, and with that, that is really tied uh, very closely to the market. Uh, but there's risk with that because just like the market, the market goes up and goes down. Um, you're, um, you you have a significant upside, but you have potential downside. And then you have um, uh, fixed indexed annuities, which are annuities that fit between a fixed annuity and a variable annuity in that uh, you have greater growth. It's tied to uh, the market, it's, hence the name index. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but however, it does have a floor. So um, in the event that um, we there's a, a year where the market performs poorly, that particular uh, type of annuity will not lose any value. It only gains, gains value on the upside. But on the other side, uh, depending on the contract, there may be a cap. So, well, let me um, let me pause there because I think that to me, I'm a conservative person in many areas and especially money. Because <laughs> I had one time about 15 years ago where you know my wife's uh, grandparents left her just a little little bit of money. It, couple three four thousand and and we placed it with this uh, advisor and all of a sudden it's like oh where'd it go gone but, so there was no floor that floor just fell out and so I right. want to talk to you about that statement you mentioned where um, there's a floor and you know no matter what the market does it might be tied to a certain index but there is a floor and you're not going to lose principal or and but yet Maybe the upside is capped because, of course, the carrier, whoever you place it with, says, "Okay, if I'm going to, you know, minimize our, you know, uh, uh, the floor, then we can give you, you know, the super high upside." But talk a little bit about the floor and the ceiling because I think that would help people feel protected. Oh, definitely, I can definitely do that. Um, so, in regards to the floor and the ceiling uh, for a um, fixed index annuity. Um, the way that's structured is depending on the, 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 the carrier that one goes with with the annuity, they are going to have um, different types of uh, indexing strategies that one can utilize or one can pull from. So let's say there's one based on the, um, the S&P, okay? And what they may specify is that, okay, um, for the S&P index, if you put in, uh, let's say, $100,000, for example, um, we are going to uh, track that particular uh, index over a one-year time frame, and it's called point-to-point. Uh, -point. 
So <clears throat> they take a look at point A, which will be maybe today, um, and they go out 12 months. 12 months later, they'll take a look at the you know point B, and what they'll do is they'll have a um, they'll be able to look at that index and determine you know how much growth there has been from a percentage perspective. Um, so let's say your contract has a uh, a cap or maximum of uh, 10%. Right, um, and in a floor of, of zero, which means you absolutely will not lose anything. So, with a cap of ten percent, what that means is that um, for the uh, uh, for the first ten percent of growth, that will you you'll get that attributed um, to your uh, portfolio, okay, to your principal. Um, anything above that is going to be the insurance company. So, yep. for example, if S and P increased twelve uh, percent, then you're going to get 10%. Um, you're going to get up to that cap 10%. Insurance company is going to keep the, the, yep. the 2% over. However, if the S&P drops, and let's say it's a significant drop, 35%, then you're um, your portfolio down to would not, exactly, yeah. you're, you're down to principal and yep. you don't lose anything. So there, that's just in, in general, overall, the, the cap and floor, the way the cap and floor yep. strategy uh, works. And, and again, I know that different people are risk tolerant and averse and depending on your age and all of those things. But for me, that just is music to my ears to, to go, okay, here's my lump sum of X and we're going to put it in whatever index, whatever that, that you would be recommending. And, um, yeah, there's a high of, like you said, the 10%, but if that, if this, if the market just crashes, because we read the headlines, some leader in Greece can wake up with a headache and our markets tank for some weird reason. So, <laughs> exactly. you know, if that were to happen and our markets tank, we can not have to make, you know, uh, scurry to the phone and go, please help. But no, you just know that you're protected. And to me, that is so huge. Now, it brings up another question within that is this. I know there's a lot of um, indexes like the S&P or the Dow or whatever choices within a an annuity. Can you um, do you have the flexibility of saying I'd like to have 20 percent of my whole fixed amount uh, um, in this index, but I would like to also have a little bit more in that index. Can you have a little variety that way? Actually, you can uh, with many of the um, um annuities, uh, the way they're structured, is that they, you, you will have a choice of indexes and you do have the uh, ability uh, to diversify and to split your principal amongst multiple indexes. Because, you know, someone might go, oh, you know, I just keep, I don't follow the markets, but I hear the headlines always talking about, you know, whatever, NASDAQ or Dow or, or S&P, and they might have a feel, feel like, well, I want to have the majority in one index over the other, but then they might also want to have like a little, you know, safety net or, or a plan B going. So that's nice to hear. You can have some, uh, some splits that way. Um, so he, here's a question, too. I, I love the idea of the safety there. Um, I know from a non-seasoned investor like myself, one question that would come to my mind is, you know, you hear way back in the old days of, well, oh, don't get this type of account like a mutual fund or something because it's so much fees and it just eats into it. Talk a little bit about the, the what people hear, the negatives about an annuity and where maybe those misconceptions are. Uh, good question. So, in regards to the negatives about annuities, you do hear people say that uh, you know, oftentimes uh, annuities they may not pay out, or um, it's not the best place to park your money uh, because of uh, the interest rate. Um, you know, it's similar to getting a certificate of deposit and the like. And the reality is, is that um, if, I mean, there's many different types of products out there, um, and you know, depending on what someone's looking for. Um, if they're looking for an annuity uh, that has uh, growth, uh, there will there are those annuities out there that can hit uh, you know eight, nine, ten percent um, uh, growth. In addition to that, uh, what a lot of people don't, uh, a lot, what many individuals may not be aware of, also is that depending upon uh, the type of annuity you, you obtain, sometimes uh, depending on um, uh, how long you plan on holding the annuity, you, you receive bonuses just for purchasing the annuity. So, okay. in, you know, for example, let's say there's that $100,000, um, $100, uh, uh, you know, cash sum that you have and you would like to uh, make a purchase using that principle, you know, depending on uh, the organization out there or the carrier rather, 
Uh, some will give you a bonus equivalent to maybe 10 or 15 percent of what you're depositing. And sometimes it could be higher, sometimes it could be lower. But that's where an independent um, individual or broker like myself comes in and yeah. identifies that opportunity um, for the client because there are many, many, many different annuities and they're not all structured the same. Uh, but you know, so those are some of the um, that's some of the feedback or some of the rebuttals that I would provide to someone uh, if they're with that or, bonus or had concerns about annuities. Yeah, and and I've heard some of those uh, things, so I'm glad you cleared that up because there's there's never the perfect anything. So there's always like, well, you have to keep this in mind. So from what I understand, you know, I love 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 hearing the floor and the protection. Good. And I love hearing about a bonus. Hey, talk to me about a bonus. Well, if you are placing your money in a specific annuity that you are, are searching out for the client, and let's just use the number 10%, and maybe that's, I don't know, 10 or $15,000 that, you know, you put in 100, and now you've got 115 because this annuity gave you this bonus. Well, that doesn't mean you can cash it out in a year. They're going to make sure that there's a certain time limit that you have to um, keep that annuity or else that bonus goes right back to them. So that could be considered a negative, but I look at it like, well, I was going to park the money there anyway. Give me the bonus. So do, do you have some people that um, feel the same way? Oh, definitely. There are individuals who concern, who are concerned about, uh, you know, putting the money, money aside for um, you know, a lengthy amount of time. Um, and with annuity contracts, they can range anywhere from one year term to 15. It depends on the situation, but oftentimes though, um, many um, annuities are designed so that if someone needed to uh, withdraw some cash, there's a certain percentage that they can withdraw on an annual yeah. basis without there being any penalties or issues. So you still have access um, to your money, um, and you still have access to it, um, but um, you know, in return for you know this protected growth, it will be it, it will be set aside and it will be um, you know um, held by the insurance company. Yes. Well, I mean, just like, you know, there, there, you think about, well, you get this large bonus and if you, uh, you know, it, you know, I've never was personally in the military, but you hear people that are in the military, they come out and maybe they um, can get some educational benefits or whatever, but they have to then stay in the military for a certain amount of time. And to me, that makes total sense. You're going to get a free education, then you need to stay in for whatever the, the number is. Well, if an annuity provider is going to pay a nice chunk of change to your portfolio and you see that number pop up, then it might mean you have to keep it in a handful of years longer than what you're initially expecting. But if that doesn't fit in your plan, then Rick says, oh, well, if that's the case, no problem. Let's look at something else. But I just like understanding that sometimes people hear the word annuity and they think one thing, but then they realize, well, hold on. There's a fixed aspect to it. There's there's a protection and a floor aspect to it. I might be able to get a bonus, and it can be parked there for long-term growth. Are there any um, tax deferred or tax benefits with that are come with the annuities? Uh, there are uh, tax benefits. Uh, oftentimes, uh, with many of the, of the annuities, with the way they're structured, um, when you invest the principal, um, any um, gains uh, that you obtain on the principal um, are tax deferred. So they're not taxed until um, you actually um, meet the terms of the annuity contract and the annuity is um, uh, paid out or returned back to you. You know, I think that's another big thing that people, when you, when you were saying, you know, there's all kinds of different variables to how soon you need the money and how risky that you're willing to go and what are your age. That's another aspect is the, the tax um, side of the equation. And, you know, that's like the old bucket with holes in it. You, we need to realize that if I need a certain amount of money at a certain time, now we just start kind of painting that picture. And that's where, you know, unfortunately – a lot of people just go, oh, well, I'm just going to go to Google and figure out what I need to do about a myriad of things. But there's so many things with respect to money and planning properly for retirement that you just can't Google and go, cool, there it is. Check the box. And now I know what to do. You need someone like Rick who will sit down and understand your entire situation and has the freedom and flexibility to place 
make recommendations not based on his constriction, but you know, oh, this is the best for you, Mr. or Ms. Client, and here we go. So what are some final thoughts that you would have on um, making decisions for annuities as it relates to when you have a lump sum distribution from maybe an inheritance or things like that? <clears throat> Just about a few final thoughts I would have on that is that when um, it, you know when one receives a type of um, uh, re, re, uh, when inheritance or or lump sum if you will um, keep in mind you know what your end goal is going to be with that money um, it, is it it's something you want to um, you want to grow is it um, do you want to grow it quickly are you looking are you interested in growing it um, over a longer period of time. Um, you know, what type of strategy do you want to employ in regards to um, fixed? If you want it to be uh, conservative, let's say you receive that money and you're, you're near retirement. Maybe you want to follow a fixed strategy or you, um, you, you're you looking for um, a protected type of growth via a, um, uh, a fixed index type of uh, annuity. So, you know, it's just it's, there's a lot of variables, a lot of questions that one needs to ask. But, you know, bottom line is, you know, when you um, – get that kind of money, make sure you sit down with your planner, make sure you sit down with your broker and really, or, or whoever your uh, financial consultant is and really um, um, share with them um, just your, your opinions on what you want to do, what your goals are for those dollars uh, so that they can craft a strategy for you that'll work. Excellent. Well, Rick, thanks so much for coming on. It's really great learning uh, some of these ideas and uh, strategies for a lump, lump sum cash distribution using annuities. And if anyone's interested in reaching out, connecting with you, maybe getting some of your um, information and, and downloads on retirement strategies, what's the best way they can reach out and connect with you? Um, they can reach out uh, several different ways, actually, Mike. Um, my, there's my website, uh, myblackpearl.co. That's one uh, avenue that one can follow. Um, you could also call um, us at 310 310- Nine seven four thirty two fifty five, and and that would be another way to reach out and, and, and contact us as well. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Rick. I really appreciate your time coming on today. Uh, thank you. It was a pleasure, Mike. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.